Have no fear, fellow citizens. The mediator is here. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of The Mediator with me, your host, Brian West. Here to give you the top eight headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. Now, as usual, I give you the top eight local headlines and developing news stories that made it first, followed by a movie clip, a skit, a trailer, or something that's going on in the community, or maybe some pictures. And then I'll give you the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week, folks. So let's waste no time. Ooh-wee! Let's get to it! Story number one is sports betting to support vets. Home, veterans' homes, a good idea. $350,000 over the first five years of sports betting license. That's what's planned. Now, these funds will support the homes of 750,000 veterans in Ohio, which has the sixth largest veteran population in the United States. Now, another talking point in this story is that one local Vindicator article states that, according to Veterans Service figures, about 90% of its annual budget is dedicated to two veterans' homes. Now, decisions are now being made about this seemingly needed idea to improve the lives of Ohio veterans. Story number two, Campbell Mayer stepping in the blight game. Blight has been a problem for many of the rundown communities overwhelmed by poverty and crime. Well, Campbell, Campbell Mayor Brian Tedesco uh, plans to tackle the blight problems in his community. Uh, City uh, Council and Mahoney County Land Bank has secured about 200000 for the work. Tedesco also has plans for a full-service grocery store building near Campbell Middle School. Now, this local story deserves a search because it's high highlighting a mayor making efforts to revive his community. The story is still developing. Story number three. What's next for tenants at 20 Federal Street in downtown Youngstown? Uncertainty is still in the air for the downtown tenants of 20 Federal Street. Uh, last checked, a consulting firm appointed by Mayor uh, Jamel Tito Brown was working with the tenants, according to a local Vindicator article. Now, the steadfast city economic partners, uh, a St. Louis company, will be providing consulting services for the project. Now, the company will help the business relocate and provide additional support. There is still a lot of unsettledness in this story. I have to note that. Now, so far, the facts simply state that a grant was approved for $6.9 million and a plan to evict the tenants was implemented on short notice. This story is still defending. Story number four. YSU hits record fundraising goals. Wow. Now, when it comes to the reign of Jim Trussell at YSU, who is also, I have to note this, Jim Trussell is also set to step down soon in February. Now, one thing is for sure, though, about the story, and that is that no one can say anything negative about how the university has been able to reach fundraising goals. Everything else you may be able to doubt, but that, that school has been in fundraising mode. Now, the local university has received a record $24.1 million in gifts from 2021 to 2022. Now, according to one local Vindicator article, that's the largest in the university's 100 in 14 year history that's pretty big now these are funds that the university needs in these seemingly uncertain times for colleges across the country YSU has been one of the universities hit by an enrollment decline but the college has been moving forward with plans in place to make the university better story number five the valley just got a five hundred thousand dollar drug settlement uh, there is one fact addressed in this story, and that is the fact that a lot of Ohioans have been affected by drugs. That's a fact. July 19th, a front page Vindicator article let the public know that a settlement had been reached in this problem. Now, a settlement of $500,000, which will be rationed out by a committee and used to help addicts. The story is still developing. That's why I made it. Story number six Lorestown exploring a new area. 
pair of business ventures. Lawrencetown's plans to move forward with plans for a $1.2 billion power plant. Uh, the, they plan to move forward. The project that was once opposed by Lawrencetown Mayor has now got his endorsement. Now, Clean Energy Future of Trumbull LLC. Well, Clean Energy Future Trumbull LLC has been granted a one-year extension according to the local news according to local news sources. Now, Lawrencetown is also reviewing the idea idea of forming a joint economic development district off of Todd Avenue with Jackson Township by forming a JEDD to attract businesses, business growth and economic development. Now the pact, uh, the pact includes more than 30 acres according to one local Vindicator article. This story is still developing. As well. Story number seven of the top two local headlines and developing news stories that made it this week, folks, when I was yay high. All I could do was make peace. I walked for a piece of chicken. All that time I was sitting on the floor and they didn't know I could walk, but I got up and I started walking for the piece of chicken. So now I'm walking on every news story for you to keep you informed, glancing through. And that's all I could do in my allotted amount of time on this planet, born out of the womb to mediate. That's all. That's all I could do. Whew, that's what I'm here for. So let's get to it, folks. Let's get to this, these top two local headlines and developing news stories. Story number seven, new attitudes emerge over ARP spending. One article spotlighting the growing tension brewing around ARP funds has made headlines. It's American Rescue Plan funds. Now, local ward members have expressed their demands for action and address how they want to split from how they want their split from the 14 million to be spent within their wards. Now, most of the article centers around local improvement proposals, but mainly focuses on local council members wanting less talk and more action in according to, in according to how the funds are spent. The story is still developing, almost made to the top. Story number eight and the top local headline and developing news story that made this week. Brrr, step right up. I've got news for you. All my life, I've been in the news. I've been delivering papers as a young boy, worked for the post office. I grew and I got out of the military. And now I'm here in here every week giving you the top eight headlines and developing news story that made this week. And it is exhausting, but I've got to do it. I've been up in the wee hours of the night every day a week looking for a story just to give you that, that information that you need. And that's why this top story is for you. <laughs> It's dedicated for you, straight out of the sweat, Mediator Hotel, baby. Ooh, yeah. Situal, situal, baby. Splendid. Let's get to it. Story number eight. Standoff in Austin Town. Wow. A 19-hour standoff in Austin Town rattled the public newspapers as one local source explains the entire situation in detail. Simply stated, a 19-hour standoff took place at an Austin Town apartment complex involving a woman with a gun. The situation involved gunfire and the removal of a nine-year-old boy. The story has left a neighborhood shocked and a town rarely making headlines in the field of violence now added to a collection of gun stories making headlines. That's why story rate such a big, big headline. Well, folks, those are our top eight local headlines and developing news stories that made this week. I'll be right back with the top eight international headlines and developing news stories. So don't you go anywhere. You're the media to be Brian West. I'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Check out Lady Perez this week on our our internet podcast, internet show. Uh, she will be talking about her newest film, Pity and the Willow Tree, where I also play in that film. And uh, are you excited? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I cannot wait, especially for the premiere. There's going to yeah. be food, a fashion show uh -huh. with the lo with the local artists from here. And you're going to not only get to see the soundtrack, <laughs> a music video, yep, yep. so much talent. Yeah. You're gonna see. August 14th at uh, 6 p.m. at the Holiday Inn in Bourbon. She is a local talent, and she will be on display. I want to uh, thank you, and uh, just check her out this week. Thank you. So, uh, I'm going to get back to the show, but check her out this week on uh, our Listen and Learn segment. Uh, Lady Perez, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. Folks, there's a game being played out there, and it's it's been played all across the world. 
uh, there's a game where people will prey off your sympathies. They will prey off of the things that you most desire to feel that you need to solve your problems. If you are poor, these people will prey off your off of your poorness. They will get you to go take out loans that you don't need. And they will take that money by telling you that you either inherited something. They will play off these sympathies. These sympathies. And they're, they're, they're coming from Nigeria. They're coming from all over the place. These are called scam artists. Now, how this happens is, is it can happen in the blink of an eye. It can happen to anybody. It even happened to me years ago. Got out of the military suffering, needed some money, got this email talking about I had inherited all this money. Now, this was just in my founding days of mediation. And me and my family had to suffer because one minute I'm thinking I got all this money. I inherited all this money and didn't inherit a dime. I'm in the bank getting these money orders that got mailed to me from a from an unknown source. Next thing you know, I'm hemmed up by the FBI. Get on the ground right now, mediator. Get on the ground. But at that moment, that's when my special powers were just in manifestation. I developed the gift to understand BS from people who prey off of the needs and wants of helpless people, folks. So that's my message to you. Don't be scammed. By a scam artist. And if you are scammed, if it is in your heart for the right reasons, it was, in my situation, all I wanted was a little bit of cash. I needed money for my family. We were poor. And this is what happens. I just got out of the military. I was banged up. And I knew, I just knew, and I wanted to believe that, that, ha that I had this money. And that's what happens. It happens to a lot of people. So don't get scammed. And that's my story. There's two messages about scam artists this week because they pray out for sympathy. But if your heart is in the right spot, then the Lord will bless you. <laughs> He's a blessing. He's a blessing to the weak because he's all that we need to be content in our poorness and our sloth and all everything else that's going on in the field of poorness. But you got to get up and rise up above the pain. Rise up above the scam artists. Don't let them get you down. Find a way. Well, folks, that's my message this week. <sighs> I feel better. I feel better now. Let's get to it. Story number one. What is going on in the housing market? If you know nothing about real estate but want a steady flow of income, the question now is, has anything changed? In the field of flipping houses, has anything changed? Most landowners are saying the same thing every day about their dreams of flipping homes and they're, and they're renting out of properties. They're saying that it's not as easy as it sounds because this this all of this land owning comes with a lot of headaches. Now, the housing market stories centered around, they center around property owners as well and potential current home buyers, which is also in the mix, and the fact that agents are trying to get potential buyers in homes with, with the hand that they've been dealt. Some people can't get approved, so the agent tries to try to find them the way to get financed. Thus, keep it, getting this story in this week. All of that, getting this story in. How inflation has affected the housing market is all in the data, folks, coming in. This story is still developing because as costs continue to rise, the price to own a home will continue to keep the rise. Story number two. Why are so many adults having sex with minors? Be questioned. A church youth leader, 61, was arrested over an alleged inappropriate relationship with a teen. Over the past year, so many stories about sex trafficking and sexual abuse cases have been in the headlines. Now, at the moment, the only solution seems to be to figure out how this became such a problem and what's going on. People got sex fever. Now, so far in 20 in the 2000s alone, everyone has been somehow caught up in a web of sex holics sex fever sex sex sexual desires if you want to say it now and, and a lot of people are not ashamed to even talk about it because it's real it's a fact people are talking about sex story number three who is winning the drug war big question america has a drug problem folks but has been working on that hard 
problem. They've been trying to get a hold of it for years. So who is actually winning the war on drugs? Big question. Some people say that it is nearly impossible to stop the flow of drugs flowing through America's streets. The details in the story show that families are still complaining about how hard and complicated it is to get their relatives off of drugs. To kick the habit is very, very hard. And few people make it out. Now, the number of families affected by drugs also continues to make headlines even after the opioid settlements. Meth methanol was found in the blood of all of the 21 teenagers found dead in a South African bar. And the CDC reports that overdoses overdose deaths among blacks and indigenous people surged in 2020 according to a USA Today or to two USA Today headlines. Now this story magnifies the ongoing war on drugs and shows in the details how complicated actually. Story number four. Someone with a gun saved the day. A gunman opened fire in an Indiana shopping mall killing three people and injuring two others. While in the act this is well. It all happened in the act. He was then killed by another gun armed gunman. So in the act, he was killed by another armed gunman. So now this story has gun rights activists in deep discussions about how to tackle the nation's still growing gun problems. Do you tackle it with somebody else with a gun? Now the talking points are simple and to the point. If no one was armed, then more people could have possibly been harmed. Another talking point is that the gunman was 20 years old and the person who shot the gunman was 22. So every detail in the story has analysts focused on what seems to be the new normal and how today's culture could be in need of some type of a change especially when it comes to guns now this story is still developing but it's important to note that the most state that most states have already started implementing laws for people to better prepare themselves for active shooters some of these states are considering arming teachers and people period that's why i started before made it this week well folks those are our top four international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week i'll be right back with the top top four so don't you go anywhere you're the beat it'll be brian west i'll be right back if you want to check out the stories that almost made it in or did make it in, go to our Twitter feed on our website. Check out everything. All of the sources are there. If you go to the website, it's M-E-T-H-O-D, the number at INC.com, method 88com where you can buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor the program. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top, top four international headlines and developing news stories that made it, folks. I got run by a man the other day. I got ran into a situation. The man comes crying to me. Hey, man, I need some gas. I lost my wallet. Me, my family, my daughter, we need to eat. So he go, he comes out. He listen, I have this gold. If you give me some money, I'll give you the gold. This is real gold. My family lives in Dubai. The man went on a rampage. Took him about three hours of my time. Would not leave me alone. He said he was in need. In need. Me being the kind media that I am, I'm thinking, I said, I said, I don't want to see this man suffer. So we went on a journey. And then after one thing led to another, the man was so determined and so, so eager to get a dime, to get gas, and to get food for his family. So I, I me being the person that I am, I said, this is, this is, we talked about God. We talked about everything. Come to find out the man walks away with two thousand five hundred dollars of of hard-earned mediator money but it was a good deed my heart was in the right place i wanted to help this man i wanted to see him flourish come to find out that the goal that he exchanged to feed his family was fake this is how bad it is out here and i thought about this you know and I contemplated and I said, now my heart was in the right place. I wanted to help this man. Talked about God. We talk, even talked about Islam. And I'm not even a Muslim. I'm a Christian. As a Christian man, I, my heart was open to inviting this brother in for peace. But the goal was not real. And I, I kind of felt in my heart, but I knew that I said, I have to do this because God, the feeling was there. I said, I'm, I said even if this man is lying, I'm doing the right thing. Come to find out. The goal was fake. He runs away with $2,500 of donation money. And I walk away with maybe 15 bucks worth of brass that looks like gold. How sad is that? So, to make a long story short, I picked up my pieces. I filled out and figured out that the world was a cruel place. So, I put my guard up, 
somebody else came in the next day this man ruined it for the next man in line a man said hey man i got some jewelry here how much can i get for it? i said no i get nothing i'm not doing it no more go oh. the man messed it up for the next man and that's how life does that's what happens when you be sour but there's a man out there and his name is god blessed for savior yeshua the god of all things came down pat me on the back and sent angels to heal me i feel all right because i did the right thing and i don't feel bad about it well glad i got that off my chest be careful out there it's a cruel cruel world Let's get to it, folks. Let's get to it. Story number five. Speaking of foreign people, foreign affairs affecting business, folks. COVID-19 literally has the business world in survival mode. Still, the war in Ukraine also has some major corporations on edge, and many have already left Russia. Oil prices and inflation is re in regards to foreign affairs has put exports and imports on the radar. President Biden has even made headlines in meetings with Saudi Arabia. India and China's political tensions have hit the smartphone market. The CNN report set notes that the two countries may be in a feud, but they need each other. We probably all need each other, but that's not the case. Card chip shortages also continue to trickle into the headlines, showing how foreign affairs is affecting the business world. How this story continues to develop could really, really impact the already up and down stock market. Now, the small business community has already been hit hard with so much still brewing. These stories are still developing. Story number six. Will the election the next election be secure? Big question. The FBI and the NSA directors warned of an evolving foreign interference threat ahead of the U.S according to one CNN headline. Now, after this, after the last heated presidential race, election officials have been under a lot of pressure. Now, and many have gone on the record showing their frustration with this stuff. Now, with, they've been, they've, they've shown constant criticism, they've put constant criticism of how they've been doing their job. So, so, uh, with all this uh, things going on, the, the people who are running the polls are getting upset because they're saying that they've been doing their job. Why do people keep criticizing us? You know, now this consistent story has left some election officials to even resign. Now, ahead of the next election, the story will continue to make headlines because preparation is key to have a solid election in every poll. Uh, station is looking for some good poll work story number seven in the top two international headlines and developing news stories that made this week you're doing wrong you're doing wrong people are doing wrong out there folks it's a it's a it's a, a sad situation when you when you trying to be right and people take advantage and they try to rough up people who mean well especially good god-fearing people i believe it. there's something powerful happening in this world and uh whatever happens to a lot of people they can't get away for too long but if you're out there you mean well then uh this this episode of of mediation was probably for you because there's a lot of good people out there getting run over and some of them are getting tired and they're starting to fight back that's why I started remember all these stories are really really big this week story number seven inflation is still a top concern especially when you got people trying to scam you when all they had to do is ask if they needed help they didn't need to give you you know have your hopes up thinking that they were trying to make a good deal this is what story number these stories are about big big headlines story number seven especially when you're trying to do the right thing uk workers suffer their biggest pay drop in two decades due to inflation according to a cna report u.s home builder sentiment falls to its lowest lowest level during the pan, since the pandemic days so early pandemic days this was a this was was an article in usa today this was a report los angeles renters fight back after being priced out of their homes this read by nbc report as inflation peaks, the economy weakens, leaving the Fed scrambling for solutions, according to a Forbes headline. Average rent in Manhattan soars to 5000 a month, according to a CNN report. The main talk now is centered on the soaring dollar and how it could actually help the Fed fight against inflation. Now, these are just some of the headlines that can be assessed when analyzing stories in the news about inflation. Story number eight at the top international headline and developing news story that made this week folks 
I have spent my life probably trying to assist the public and the best way I put my life on the line for the country. I've done so much to try to improve the lives of others. And I will continue. To, I won't let people stop that. You know, I get tested. Uh, I get people telling me, you know, you're a nice guy, Brian. And uh, you don't want to be violent. You know, there's a monster in us all. But when somebody comes to you and they have their wife and family and they completely lie to you and they, they take your kindness for a weakness and they run off with money that they don't understand. If people don't understand how money works, this is how people get scammed. And there are people out there who prey off of these feelings that we possess as human beings when we, when we want to help our fellow man. And this is how sad it is. This is how sad the world can be, but you got to keep moving. So I came in here today with the attitude that I have to keep. I've been through a lot. I faced uh, the, the, the life and death of the military. I saw people, the Twin Towers fall. And uh, all it does, the, the pain and the punishment that I've seen in my life, it's been making me stronger. So I want to tell you out there, it's making it be the same. We were facing some, some very, very strange times, but you have to stay strong. And that's what these stories are about this week. Story number eight, let's get to it. There's something strange taking place in the education department. Talk about staying strong. America is divided when it comes to student loan forgiveness, folks, due to fairness. And that's a fact. Now, Trump's education secretary, Betsy DeVos, or should I say former, she goes, she has gone all the record saying that the, uh, the education department needs to be abolished. Now, another Forbes article hopes in on the difficulty in finding teachers to fill positions. The article goes on to explain everything that went wrong during the pandemic. Education is big, folks, is in America. But it cannot go unnoticed. That's why the story is at the top this week. If something is brewing in these stories, they have to stay alive because if college enrollment is down, that means that a lot of people could be losing faith in the importance of gaining a higher education. That's an investment into oneself. I went to college. I went to the military. I had to go to school in the military. So education is big. This is how I was able, I'm able to produce this show with the knowledge that I've obtained by reading and studying. So these stories are still developing. That's why Sterner Rate is at the top this week, because if I were not educated, I would not have been thinking in my head when I uh, met the man that if I donate two thousand five hundred, he's going to put that money back into the economy. And by me giving him that money, I could be getting a blessing in return because because I am giving and it will be returned by the blessings of God. <laughs> and that's what I believe. That's what I believe. <sighs> well, folks, I hope you got something out of today's program. I always get something out of the research. Those are our top eight local and international headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. I'm a clever believer. I believe in it. Brilliant to believe in God because God gives you knowledge. He gives you inspiration. He gives you life, especially when the devil tries to take it away, folks. Oh, yeah. As usual, I'd like to thank all the news outlets, the people on the front lines, the journalists. You deserve all the credit, the media. I'm just the media, the man in the middle. If you want to show some support here at Methane, it does not take much. I have to visit the website on the screen to buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or to sponsor a program. Or you can even stop by the store and have a conversation with me, see my smiling face. And uh, you might even get a blessing. <sighs> Well, folks, thank you for tuning in this week. I'll be back next week looking through over 200 more stories just for you to keep you informed. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you for tuning to the media with me, Brian West. Stay safe out there. Peace. Have no fear, fellow citizens.